And how you doing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? Welcome in to another gathering of the Concurpas. The Wild Side Live is coming at you from the east side of Music City. And I'm your host, Eric Clark, saying thank you very much for taking time out of your day to join us. Welcome in all of our moderators, Tria, Raven, Chris, hanging out, making sure, keeping all of you primitive screwheads in line. Yanni first through the door. Kitty, Gwen, who else we got? I saw Bad Mother Rucker in the house. Rodri is here. Jorg, Nick, um, Eric, nice. I'm missing Kentucky Trucker, I believe might be passing through. <laughs> he may be passing through Nashville on any given time. I do follow you, Trucker, so you know we do follow each other on social media. So I do enjoy your Nashville photos. Got a little nasty here the last couple of days, but... That's what happens in Middle Tennessee in April and May. Uh, it's very, people get real, people here get real nervous when it rains because we are prone to flash flooding and tornadoes. We live in this really cool, um, it's not cool, it's not cool at all. We live in this weather dome because uh, we sit up against this uh, plateau and we're right at the foothills of the Appalachians and then you got this flat area and river. You know, it, if you look at it, if you zoom out, you know, from Nashville and look at the terrain and how it's situated. Um, we get really weird weather. The first, the first week I was in Nashville, uh, the first week I was in Nashville, the tornado ripped through downtown. And the funny part was I watched it go down interstate 24 heading east or, or heading east to west. You could see it and you could see it moving through the city. And my wife was working at a law firm downtown that day we didn't even know each other i had just moved to town we, we it'd be another year until we meet but i she tells the story about being in the office and it just going right down printer's alley like pfft, this little tornado just going right through but we have had some this area of the united states along with oklahoma and texas and kansas uh, we are the tail end of tornado alley in a way so we had some uh we had some sketchy some sketchy weather and the temperature drops so it's going to be in the 30s for the next couple of nights um it's been an interesting couple of days plus my cats have been pissing me off and that's been um a little battle but i've got this app everybody's been telling me to get this apple bitter or bitter apple stuff this spray that they make for animals and i've even looked into um i've so i have a lot of the wires on the floor protected but it's the ones hanging behind my desk that they go after when I'm not around. So I'm going to get this spray and spray it over there and hopefully it'll work. And then I'm going to get their nuts cut off. Um, maybe that'll slow them down and show them who's boss. You know, establish my dominance. That's the other thing too. <laughs> so thank you very much for taking, now that we've started off that way, taking nuts. Um, I do want to say thank you for taking time out of your day. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you're hitting the like button. Get all those um, algorithms going for me. Learned recently that all you have to do is throw one little horn em emoji on my videos that I make, and that's a comment. And the more comments I get, the um, better it helps me in the algorithm. Hey, Paul. Hey, Magnus. Hey, Marcus. Um, it helps me in the algorithm, gets me into that stream. So anytime you watch a video of mine, if you've not commented, please go back and... Um, Go back and make sure you just throw horns on it. Eric says, is wireless an option? Yes, I'm, I am looking into that, uh, the wireless. So that that might be my next little... I've, I've had this system for a long time. Maybe it's time to upgrade. I don't know. Maybe I'll give it to my son upstairs. Who knows? But I did look into a little subwoofer with a couple of speakers. Um, I just don't know how that's going to sound in here because I have this system set up. I love getting I love getting the, you should wear headphones. And it's like, bro, you have no idea the room I'm in. You have no idea I'm surrounded by the sound. You just can't tell because of how I have everything um, plugged in and, and how everything is linked. So the sound that's coming out of my speaker is separate from the control of everything. It's, it's difficult to explain. I can cue things up is, is the difference. My sound is separate from what you're hearing when you watch the video. It's completely separate when you, there may be a lag with the wireless. Yes, that's the other thing too. So it's just, 
here's what it is. I'm working too hard to solve the problem. The problem's real simple. Those cats get anywhere near it, I scream at them and threaten to murder them. And then I give them treats and pet them later when they're somewhere else and, you know, all the other stuff. People... People forget they're animals. They're still just animals, man. They, you, you, we as pet owners talk to our animals in this way of being conversant, and it's not. It's about tone when you train an animal. So I had one of these guys that worked in canine talk about you know words, pepper spray. Um, so I, I don't want to hurt them. There's this apple, this bitter apple spray that is specifically made to spray on cables, on um, edges of couches and stuff like that. It's, it's the, um, do you remember back in the day when there used to be um, behavior modification over the counter stuff? If your child chewed their nails, there was this application you could put on your, chi- on your kid's nails that if they chewed their nails, it, it tasted nasty, right? My sister, would bite my sister would bite her nails down to the quick if she could it was just this thing of hers um i have one it's when you grow up in a house like ours everybody has a tick mine is pulling out my beard hair but anyway um and eyebrows and stuff like that so i was a weird kid we all were we put the fun in dysfunctional though Uh, but there was this stuff you could put on the fingernails and you could um if you bit it, it tasted, it tasted so gross. It tasted so gross. But that was a different time. But animals can, are, if you train an animal vocally, which is what you're doing when you raise a pet, you're training them vocally to the sound of your voice. And, and I love when people say cats can tell or dogs can tell when you're sad. Of course they can because of the tone, because of how you're just everything is, is how you are conditioning the animal to your behavior. So if everywhere else I'm lovey and I'm belly rubby and I'm scratchy and treats and everything, they're, they're down. But if they get to this certain area and they see aggression, they understand, stay away from that area. But they are kittens and they do take time, especially male kittens. And from what I understand, tuxedo cats are like huskies of cats. They're like the crazy, they're like orange cats. They're like the craziest, um, they're just like the craziest, most insane. And they howl, like I told you, they howl at night. They got that pigeon thing going on. Well, they'll walk around together just like, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? But yeah, they're the huskies of cats and they're just insane. They parkour off his of shit all the time and you just, it's just insanity. But you just have to be patient and train them. Um, same thing. And I lost my patience. I got up the other morning. Uh, Monday morning and I hadn't slept well because I felt I I felt and I, I still to this day feel justified even though my my body is telling me otherwise my brain is going nope nope because I thought it was a great idea on a Sunday night at 10 30 p.m. to eat four slices of pepperoni pizza with garlic salt and Asiago cheese I thought that was just a brilliant idea. The munchies are a motherfucker. I'll tell you that, dude. They are. Woo! They will get you. So I was up and down all night eating Tums, trying to find a position where I wasn't, you know, burping flames or feeling like I was dying or sweating. Then I woke up Monday morning, and I come out here and just start my day putting on some tunes and, you know, get the day going kind of a thing, and nothing came through the speaker except for the left channel and I was just like oh dude not again not again man not again uh just not again couldn't it just it it was just all I just let it get to me and that that is something I deal with is is man I I am super chill 99.9 percent of the time because I know how quick I am to snap on somebody I understand. I understand that I have. Um, <laughs> I have no f's to give. Hey, M. Park. Hey, York. I, I. I just don't care. I never have. Um, so I. I have. I have worked diligently with help from my wife and my kids 
to um, just pause for a second. <laughs> That's all you got to do. That's all I, you know, just, just, just pause for a second. And more than likely, you will not want to um, say what you're getting ready to say. But I, I kind of lost my temper Monday morning. I did, um, without a doubt. So, But I didn't apologize to the cats, though. They still can't come back here. I still don't want them back here. Hey, Trina Dawn, dropping in to say hello. Can't hang out long, but I hope you have a great rest of the day. So, thank, you for, thank you for just stopping by and gracing us with the sunshine that is your, that is your presence. There, is that, you, that'll be, that, you, can, you can clip that and use that as your ringtone. <laughs> that's, that's what you can do. So thank you for stopping by. Even if you're just hanging out for a minute, just throw a like on the page. Just throw a like on the chat. That's all I'm asking. Uh, just stop by, say hi, throw a like, and dip. I understand it. Completely understand. So anyway, it's been an interesting week. And then we had the storms last night. And it, it does trigger. I've had a few... I told you the story of the tornado going down like two streets over, right? Like I told you guys that story about my boys and me in the center of the house with a futon mattress over top of us. Man. So, yeah, it, it's bad weather in Nashville is triggering. Then there was the flood of 2010. Uh, the flood of 2010 is what really changed a lot. Uh, really really changed it, it changed a lot it, it changed real estate it changed everything it, it was brutal it just go if you want to see something interesting go to YouTube let me see if I can find it and show it for show it to you let me see if I can find it hold on a second it's it was the weirdest thing and it happened during a live newscast um ten um, let me see if this pops up. So we were just watching the, tornadoes and now we're living the, pandemic, but it was the news. We were just watching the news and they were showing Interstate 24. And you're watching Interstate 24. You're literally watching people driving on the interstate coming from the east heading west on 24 and you're watching cars as the cars are driving you're seeing this flood start to it, it was all these rivers got river from this side river from that side just it was craziness and this one scene on interstate 24 was a um Hey, Toad's New Mania. Welcome. Thank you for dropping by. Do you know what a, a, um, a portable classroom looks like? Do you, do you guys not in the United States know what a portable classroom is? So in the United States, we have portable classrooms. It's where they used to keep the special ed kits. You have your school proper, and then outside the school, but on the property, are these little mobile buildings separate from the school. And those are known as, uh, like I said, they used to keep the special ed kids there. I know it sounds horrible, and I, I heard it when I said it. But anyway, so you're watching the news, and you just see this detached classroom floating past all these flooded cars. And you're like, man, I really hope there are no kids in there. Like, I hope there are no kids in there. But it was that flood that completely wiped out the riverfront downtown Nashville a lot of studios I know a guy whose studio was 12 feet underwater he lost millions of dollars in equipment insured yes and he moved up to Hendersonville so he was doing three doors down uh one of their albums he was like hey come by the studio and check it out and um my video says three march oh because I I'm sorry you know what are you gonna do you know <laughs> What are you going to do? So I get the wrong date. I get the wrong names. I get, come on. So, um, but anyway, so he was like, yeah, I'm up in Hendersonville now. And I was like, oh, you got that, you got that uh, insurance money. <laughs> it was like, I'm not paying, I'm not paying the rent again to live back down there. So all of this commercial property popped up 
and the commercial property pro popped up while leases were running out. So all of a sudden, in downtown Nashville, in this one area in 2010, 2011, you had all this open real estate. Well, developers came in, and instead of putting in businesses, they put in condos with businesses on the bottom floor kind of thing. The new apartment, you know, one-stop shop. There's a market. There's a restaurant. You can pay your bills, you know, kind of a thing in your apartment building. So all of that popped up. Well, then that created a domino effect of investors saying, oh, Nashville's the new hot market. Add on top of that, we are a red state with no sales tax and pretty lax gun laws. So a lot of people started moving here in the past 20 years, uh, the past 10 years. A lot of people have been leaving um, not so laxed areas of the country and moving their businesses and their homes to Nashville. On top of, we have Nissan, Volkswagen, um, Dollar General is here. Um, there's a lot of big companies here in Nashville or in the Tennessee area because we don't have a, we don't have a state tax. So we don't have a state income tax. So it's a very, uh, I remember talking with um, a, a Titan who had signed from another team. And I was like, but this other team was wanting you as well. And he was like, yeah, but I'm coming to Tennessee and there's no state tax. So I'd actually make more money if I signed for this team than if I signed for that team. See, when he was younger and getting out of college, he would have signed with whoever signed him first. But because it was his second or third, I think it was his second or third contract. He was like, no, 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 I'm older now. I'm looking at retirement. So it's like, yeah, I want to make sure that I'm living in a place where I'm earning the most money because I may not make it a whole season. So I want to make sure that I'm living in a place that is conducive with growth beyond football. So, but yeah, Tennessee is a very, um, Tennessee is a very, it's a red state with blue cities. That's what you have. So Memphis, Nashville, and Chattanooga are blue cities. I think Chattanooga is blue. Uh, very liberal, libertarian, um, very Democrat run cities you know mayor the mayor looks like a 12 year old dude you got activists i mean it, it's it's very blue in their governance whereas the the culture the lifestyle of tennessee is very conservative it's it's still small town when you get outside of these metropolitan areas um, if you go to Jackson, Tennessee, if you go to Cleveland, Tennessee, you go to Pulaski, Tennessee, or any of these not, you know, hole in the walls, but not major cities, it's still a very conservative environment. Um, I saw a video on Twitter about a, a woman in Russia talking about the differences between Moscow and the rest of the country and how if you're in Moscow and you have purple hair, no one's going to look twice at you. If you go to a, a small town outside of Moscow and you have purple hair, people are going to look at you and people are going to say something to you. That's, their, that's just how they are out there. The same could be said. I think the same could be said, honestly, anywhere. I think if you get, and I think we've talked about this before, if you get 50 miles outside of any major city, you will see the polar opposite of the um, cultural morality of that city so like with new york city you look at new york city in the five boroughs it's a very liberal city it's a very blue city it's a very progressive right kind of a city go 20 miles outside it's it's it would be considered conservative it's a small town everybody knows each other they have certain values that they all agree upon and that's why they live there and you know things like that tennessee is that way you will go to places that you definitely feel like an outsider. But I, I believe in my heart of hearts that Depeche Mode are brilliant songwriters. And I believe brilliant songwriters have an insight into the human mind that, that us normies don't. People are people. People are absolute people, no matter where you go. No matter what you look like, no matter how your eyes are shaped, no matter what language you speak or anything like that, people are people. 
we we feel safe around like-minded individuals and that is the that is the basic understanding of society so when people ask me man i want to come to nashville i want to move to tennessee i try to explain to them okay which one you which one do you want (coughs) do you want to live in nashville or do you want to live in tennessee because they're two different places they're completely different places So if you want to live in Tennessee, I can give you some great places where you can move to and commute. You can get to Nashville in 30, 45 minutes. Um, but yeah, uh, there's, a, there's, a big, there's a big difference, man. <laughs> oh, I just put the Depeche Mode earworm into you, huh? Good. Nothing wrong with the, with the Depeche. Look, it's a lot better than like, you know, Hot Butter's Popcorn. Or John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, you just walk up to somebody and say that name, and they're going to get pissed because now it's there. If you just walk up to a stranger and look him in the eye and say John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, it'll take a second, but you'll see him get that "oh, you son of a bitch" look. Like this is it. That, that's it. This is my day now. <laughs> this this is this will consume the rest of my day. You can listen to anything else, man, but you're going to be standing at the copier. You're going to be standing at the printer waiting for your TPS report to come out. And all of a sudden, you're going to catch yourself. His name is my name, too. Uh, 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 Wherever we will. God damn it! (laughs) Yeah, man. You will definitely, you will definitely have that in your head. That's brutal. Schaefer and I did that every week on our show. We purposely played earworms. Like, all right, it's time. Boom. Here's hot butter popcorn. Do you not know hot butter's popcorn? Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. That's like that's like an alien face sucker. That's not an earworm. That's an that's a face sucker of a song right there. If you actually hear hot butter popcorn, you will want to drive your car off of a bridge. Laughing the whole time. Like Danny DeVito in Batman. <laughs> Yes. Now, I'm good, Toad. Ace of Base doesn't get me like that. I've spun it enough in clubs to hate it, to, to, not, um, to not have that as an earworm. You, you can say that shit to me, and I'm good. Uh, that doesn't, it doesn't get to me. Because I'll be honest with you, all that she wants is a banger of a track. It's, I, I watched women react to that song being played, so I already know. You can hide now. You can hide behind time. You know, that's cool. I was there. I saw it happen. It's fine. <laughs> it's it's fine. Uh, the one that gets me was uh, J.G. Wentworth. I've got a new ability and I need cash now. J.G. Wentworth. <laughs> Here in Tennessee, we are dealing with, uh, hey, Calametto. Um, here in Tennessee, we deal with the 1877 Cars for Kids. When I hear 1877 Cars for Kids, it actually makes me want to work against the interest of children, including my own. That's how bad that jingle is. And they do it on purpose. I, I've been in meetings with people. I have, and and there are certain things that when it comes to marketing, you do not get away from. You, I, I call it the Honest Abe Log Holmes effect. When I first moved to Tennessee, there was a song, there was a, a commercial that was nothing but a jingle. There, was, there were no jingle, then a guy talking, then the jingle out kind of a thing. No, no, it was a straight 30-second jingle. It was a song about Honest Abe Log Homes. And they sang the the details of a log home, right? Laying on a port, you know, the whole thing. But it was done in a voice similar to Dolly Parton. This sweet southern, look, I, 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 my wife would lay it on people. She didn't have a heavy southern accent, but she did. She, she did have a southern accent, but anytime we would go somewhere, people were like, oh, my God, start talking. Because <laughs> they just loved her voice. 
that 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 sweet southern drawl it sounds like syrup it really did and it was done in this in this way now look it was the most obnoxious commercial on the radio honest day blog it's what you always wanted it was it was horrible it's like the um blue bell like the blue bell ice cream if if you don't know blue bell ice cream sappy saccharin Oh my God! It, it, like you, you feel horrible that you don't buy children, like random children, Blue Bell ice cream at this point. But the Honest Day blog home effect is this: Yes, I hated that thing, hated it, hated playing it, hated hearing it. I will never, as far as I can tell, in my lifetime, I will never need anyone to build me a log home i don't see it happening but if i ever needed a log home built in the tennessee area i can i now have a name i now have honest abe log homes because it's the only log home in my head. I hope I hope I just fixed the uh, the. Uh, I was getting a notification that my mic was a little hot, so I apologize about that. If I was getting a little rattly with the modulation, just had to turn it down a little bit. Uh, we had the Hey Culligan man. The the commercials from back in the day. Um. I guess they don't hold up well. I don't know what you'd call them. But we had uh, the ones I remember that like stay in my head are the um, first off, dear Norelco, dear Norelco razors. If you don't start putting Santa Claus in an electric razor head going through the snow during Christmas on TV, I'm going to come down there. What the hell happened, man? What happened? What happened? Are, are, are you telling me someone complained? Are you telling me that Santa Claus sledding in a razor head is is out of fashion? Is that what you're telling me? It, here's, here's the amazing thing about our commercials growing up. A little old lady had three words. Built Wendy's. Wendy's was third or fourth or maybe fifth burger joint. One commercial with a little old lady screaming at a guy. Changed everything. Really did. But I remember the um, girls, sorry, ladies, you can help me with this. It was the commercial with the, I used such and such, and I told a friend, and she told two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on, and the screen would, would like, multiply. Like, what was the product for that? Um, I told two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. Cameron Swayze takes a lick and keeps on ticking. I don't know the moldy old dough. That must be a UK thing. I don't know that one. Here in the States, we had that one. We had uh, Ancient Chinese Secret. That was Calgon uh, laundry detergent, I believe. Ancient Chinese Secret, huh? Vidal Sassoon. Thank you, Gwen. Yeah, there were like all there were all kinds. I mean, dude. There were whole commercials devoted to, like, just some chick flipping her hair in slow motion for, like, Breck. Remember Breck? What was the, uh, my sister used to use a beer shampoo. There was a, there was a beer shampoo that was popular for a while. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it was, a, it was... I mean, that's how it was marketed. It was because there was this period. Our generation, bro, is so fucked up. So messed up that it was a thing to wash your hair in beer. I, I'll, I, 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 I vividly remember my sister with her head in the sink washing her hair with one of my dad's beers and my dad complaining because my dad didn't drink a lot of beers he didn't drink a lot but what he drank was expensive he drank Michelob 
And those I miss those commercials too. Remember the Lowenbrow commercial, that smooth ass jazz song Lowenbrow commercial? Here's to good friends. Tonight is kinda special. The beer will pour. Must say something more somehow. Crazy. So tonight, let it be low and brow. Had the frosty mug. Or Billy D. Williams. The big bull crashing through the wall. Or 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 Bob Euchre. <laughs> now it's coffee based shampoo. Thank you, Sip. Appreciate that one. Wasting beer. Yes, that's what my dad was complaining about. Uh yeah. Yeah, Oscar Meyer, the little kid sitting on the um sitting on the bridge. We all sang that. We all sang that song. We did. Even if we didn't eat bologna. And that's why we call it bologna. For all of you wondering why Americans call it bologna and not bologna is because of that commercial. My bologna has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. Even though it says bologna right there on the package, we could say it if we wanted to. <laughs> we could actually say bologna if we want. Bologna if we wanted to. But no, it was easier for that kid to say baloney. So, and it it was a word, something else too, and we forget. Why is baloney the word and not bologna? Simple, because baloney was a popular word used in film, in comedy film. So baloney was already there for people. So I got this food called bologna. Okay, I'm going to eat a bologna sandwich. Plus, it goes back longer than that anyway. People were eating bologna. You could probably do the research, but bologna is probably hundreds of years old. I don't know why we call it bologna. I'm just guessing it's because of marketing. It's easier. So we just say bologna. Or, or it could be it could be this. I wouldn't put it past the British. To purposely call it baloney just to piss off the Italians. I I wouldn't put it past them. Right, baloney. I just the whole time getting corrected while they're on vacation. <laughs> and they're arguing with a guy. Bologna. Baloney. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past the British. They are that spiteful. Um, yeah, the Kool-Aid busting through the door. Um, Amelia Clark singing Quando, Quando, Quando. I don't remember that one. Uh, the Raven, uh, a good friend of mine came to me with the product as a gift when I lost my hair, so I just smacked him. Uh, you piss people off so well. Yeah, the sun doesn't set on your shit baggery. <laughs> uh, no, shit housery, sorry. Uh, yes. The Corinthian leather. I remember, that was um, Mr. Rourke. Ricardo Montalban. I don't even know what car that was. I bet it sucks, too. I bet the car was, was like mid. It wasn't a Mercury. Oh, what was he selling? What car, what car was Ricardo Montalban selling with the rich Corinthian? Totally made up, by the way. Rich Corinthian leather. <laughs> what, what, what piece of shit American-made car were they trying to tell black people to buy? Because that's how you do it. All right? I'm sure it was that kind of car. Right there. Yeah, Ricardo Montalban. Ricardo Montalban. Remember when they brought back Fantasy Island and everybody was upset that they didn't have a midget? <laughs> like, remember that? Remember they brought it back and tried to make it all updated. Everybody's like, hey, where's the little guy? Where's the little dude ringing the bell? Hervé Villachay. You know, let me tell you something. That guy was a party animal. From what I understand and everything I read, Hervé Villachay partied for a full-size man. Uh, he did. Like, he was, a, he was a hound dog, woman chaser. Like, he was, he was in it, man. He was down with being famous. Uh, had a shit bagger. They would have had Americans to make up. Okay. Tattoo. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I misspoke. I meant shit house. Uh, I watched a Jamie Vardy video the other day. That's why that word was in my head. So, anyway. 
Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you're hitting that like button. Get those. Uh, it was the Chrysler Cordoba. Thank you, Gwen. I appreciate that. My grandfather drove a Bu Buick Riviera. Got a new one every year. Yep. He was weird like that. But anyway, so yeah, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you're also with us over on the Discord server if you're not uh, subscribe to the Discord server. Everything is linked down below, including the um, social media, the PayPal, the Patreon. And if you've got a, you know, if you feel like being generous and want to do a super chat, that's ready to go as well. I think I've monetized today's video. For those of you asking about the live reactions, I think I think Tria and I are really close to, sorry, to getting that nailed down. Like, we're going to do it on Saturdays. So we're going to do Saturdays. We're going to do four requests a live stream. So that's only four. So that's two an hour. And we're going to start small. And we'll put out the notice about an hour, maybe two hours before the live stream starts to get your request to us. And we'll have a sub for you and everything. And then what we'll do is that'll give us time to clear the request to make sure that the request is able to be played on the live stream. And then once I make sure that your $10 is in the kitty, I'll put a little sign on, on the request and then we'll have the four ready to go. And hopefully we'll have them ready to go by the beginning of the live stream. That is the tentative plan. So it is going to be a first come first serve situation as well. So whoever gets in there, the first four people that get in, get the 10 bucks in, <clears throat> excuse me and on paypal you can put your request in there just to you know so i can link it up between the two sites but whoever the first four are they get their suggestions in that are cleared those are the ones that get uh get the priority if i can get to others maybe but i, I think we should just start small for now when we do our live um our live reactions so yeah but anyway speaking of discord we also do this thing where people can, if you think of a question during the week, you can ask me anything. You know, this is an AMA all the time. That's what this, that's what this chat is about. This is about just sitting and, and, and talking. So any questions you have, you can either put them in the chat here, or if you think of it outside of a live stream, over on Discord, we have a live stream questions. So if you have a question for me, then you're like, okay, I don't feel like writing it down. Just put it in the, the – I'll get to it during the live stream. So I, I think I saw one in there. Yeah, that's right. Gwen, did you change – did you change the um, the question? Because I, I, your first question was about music of the 70s. And this is not it. Uh, yeah, Tria, uh, Tria is, and also post your request in the live stream requests. Yes, so that's, sorry, Let, let's, let's, back it up. Okay, so you'll post in PayPal the, the 10 spot, and you, and you can, if you want, put your request in there as a, as a you know, reminder, but your, your request will go in what Tria, I'm going to pin this right here, what Tria just posted about that will go into you have to put it in first and foremost the most important place to put it is the live stream requests folder so that's the first and foremost you pay your 10 drop the link there you go pay the 10 link in the in the sub pay the 10 link there you go so we also have the live stream questions Gwen asked about the 70s but she also uh, has this question as well she deleted it um, you thought of a different one. Okay. Um, so, okay, I'll, I'll answer it. If I could bring back one artist that passed well before their time and spend a whole day with them, who would it be and why? That would be Stevie Ray Vaughan. I would, I would want to sit down and, and have lunch with Stevie Ray Vaughan. Just to... understand a fraction bit more of one of the 
most emotional, imperfectly perfect blues guitar player of our time. You know, you can bring up Albert King and, and all the other guitar players, but Stevie had something that that when you combined his vocals and his guitar, they become this one thing. They become this bleeding heart. They be it his his music is the perfect example of conflict of emotion you can feel really good about a stevie ray vaughn song while also feeling your heart breaking it's an incredible thing to sit and experience a great example of how simply perfect his tone is and how connected to the human it is there's a song he did with his brother it's a hard listen. I think it might be a hard listen, especially if you if you sit and you think about today. I think if you listened to the song and thought about the world, it's a beautiful song. It's a, it's a very bright song, but it hurts. It's called Tick Tock by the Vaughn Brothers. And it's just a wonderful, just an absolutely wonderful collision of hopeful heartbreak. And I would just like to understand a little bit. You know, I've had the chance to talk to so many people and, you know, not really ask, how do you do this? How do you do that? Why do you? That's not where I go with with folks. I learned a long time ago the Larry King method. All right. You know, ask them to, you know, ask questions to get them to tell stories. Uh, that's that's the best way to get people to um, open up. And I, I remember an interview I was involved with with a guy named Doyle Brammel. Um, if you don't know who Doyle Brammel is, I'm sorry. I really am. He had released a, an album with a song called Bird's Nest on the Ground. It was the name of the track that we were playing. And I remember standing in the studio reading the liner notes. And I noticed that Jimmy Vaughn, because he, he played in Texas Flood or, or some some band with Jimmy Vaughn. And they, they were, Jimmy Vaughn and uh, Doyle Brammel are lifelong, were lifelong friends. Uh, they'd known each other since very young childhood or teen years or something like that. Um, this is where I noticed that Mike Judge, the guy that created Beavis and Butthead at King of the Hill, played bass. He played bass on a Doyle Bramble song. And I'm like, is that is that Mike Judge from Beavis and Butthead? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> that's Mike Judge from Beavis and Butthead. He was a roadie or a tech or something like that. Um, yeah, he played on one of the tracks. So we asked Doyle Bramble if he had any run-ins with Stevie Ray Vaughan. And Doyle Bramble tells the story about the first time he heard him. He was in another room just playing on his brother's guitar and Doyle was in the house to pick up Jimmy or whatever the I can't remember the exact you know chronology of the story but in essence Doyle heard him when he was very young and was like yo what's that you know that's a it's a different it's a different sound you know Stevie played because his brother played but Stevie played a different kind of guitar than anyone else played. You can see interviews with Buddy Guy and B.B. King and Eric Clapton and Bonnie Raitt and all these prolific Steve Vai, Ingve Malmsteen, all of these prolific guitar players, and most of them will come down to Stevie Ray Vaughan and say, yo, don't even put me anywhere near that guy. 
<coughs> like, don't even put me anywhere near Stevie Ray Vaughan. Watching him, you know, the the first Austin, he did two Austin City Limits. Uh, the first Austin City Limits you should have on DVD. <laughs> that, nah, man, that ain't fair. I talk about cheat code and shit a lot. That, that, that's wrong. It's wrong. It is so wrong. And the band that's playing with them is just as it, it's, it's all wrong, man. It's just, it's like, all right, dude, I remember watching that on PBS and it was like, yo, this isn't right. Like there's, there's something different here. There's something really different here. Um, that is unlike anything I've ever seen, heard, or thought of before. And still to this day, there's, there's this, there's this place inside of my soul that he reaches that nobody gets to that that's what it is um the, a great example of that is little wing dude stevie ray vaughn's version of little wing yo man jimmy's not coming anywhere near that clapton's not coming anywhere near that Nobody's coming anywhere near that, dude. If you haven't heard Little Wing by Stevie Ray Vaughan, or if you haven't heard it in a while, just go back and listen to it. There is nothing like it. Nothing like it. It is, it is a religious experience through that guitar. It is, it's incredible. It's, inc it's abs you know, his voodoo child is, is out of this world. Um, all of his music is just absolutely incredible. You know, Couldn't Stand the Weather, one of my favorite albums, one of my favorite songs, just such a funky, great blues, rockabilly track, and then all of a sudden you realize, dude, this guy is destroying this song, man. Just And, he's, and he did it with such... That's what I talk about, this, this natural, organic vibe, is because when you watch that first... You know, Rodri said he's got it on DVD. When you watch that performance, that's where you really see, bro. There's no, there's no disconnect between Stevie Ray Vaughan and that guitar. There's, there's not. Every movement of that dude is is perfect. It, it it's incredible to watch. Like I said, I've, I've seen Clapton. I've seen a lot of guitar players, but I've never seen anyone who was at one with that instrument the way he was. It, you, you, it's... Hey, Thule, have a good night. Be safe. It, it is, like I said, it's a religious experience. It really is. Another one that comes close is Jeff Beck and Seal's version of... Um, Manic depression. Fuck. Dude. Dude, look, I love Jimi Hendrix, man, and I, I absolutely understand why he is held in the regard he is, and I get it. I totally get it. I love a lot of his music. Fire is one of my favorite songs of his. But, yo, man, and you call it a cover. I don't care. Jeff Beck and Seal doing Manic Depression. Like I said, man, you're like, Jimmy made it awesome. What Jeff Beck did with Seal made that song. That's like, okay, dude. Okay. Okay. Please don't hate me. I'm going to piss a lot of people off when I say this. I, I really am. Please don't hate me. Sometimes someone else can do things better. Sometimes. Sometimes while still containing the source. I really hope you're understanding where I'm going with this. Sometimes it can be done better. And you hear it with manic depression between Jimi Hendrix and Jeff Beck and Seal. There's something about Seal's voice that is cleaner yet dirtier. It's, it's, it's sexual. It really is. It's a... Look, Jimmy dripped... sexual seal is sensual it's more emotional jimmy's banging you seal and jeff beck are making hard dirty love to you 
I'm talking ankles behind the ears, ladies. Right? You're sucking a thumb. This is this is getting down in it. Another great example of that. Sorry, I just said something really horrible. Um, another great example of that, and this is just my opinion. Just my opinion. I really hope, hey, Dwarf Man, I really hope Johnny B is not watching this live stream. I doubt he is. But we almost got into it. We almost got into it. <laughs> Like he was, he was physically offended by what I said when I said these things. I said two things. Number one, the Bengals version of Hazy Shade of Winter is better than the Simon and Garfunkel version of Hazy Shade of Winter. That made him clutch pearls. He literally went, like this, we were sharing a studio at the time. And he was like, what the fuck did you just say? And I went, yeah, dude. The Bengals version of Hazy Shade of Winter is better. It's a better rock song. Plus, it's Jamie Gertz getting nailed up against a wall in that movie. So, um, you know the movie I'm talking about. So, yeah, it's a better song and I hope you're sitting do not punch the screen Elton John's version of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is better than the Beatles version of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds there I said it and I will never come off that opinion. I've listened to I've listened to both. On the low end. On the low end. Thousands of times. Both at work and personal. Growing up on the radio, around me, thousands of times. And as far as I'm concerned, Elton John makes that song bigger. It is a bigger song when Elton John does it. Because the Night by 10,000 Maniacs is a bigger song than Patti Smith's or Bruce Springsteen's version. I may be asked to explain that at the pearly gates. That's going on the list of shit I got to explain, Cali Meadow. All right, <laughs> that's that is the that is the um, is the least of what I have to do. Uh, Elton John's version of the Pinball Wizard better than the Who. It's bigger. It's bigger. But if you tell me that Limp Biscuit's version of Behind Blue Eyes is better than the Who, we may have to throw hands. We may actually have to throw hands. I refused. I refused to add that song. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. When we got that song, I'll never forget going to my boss's office and going, you better know how to put a song in the computer because I'm not doing it. He said, what are you talking about? I said, the new Limp Bizkit song came in. It was from a, what, what movie was that from? What movie? What movie was that after birth smeared over? And we got this email. I get the email from the A&R guy. Hey, man, here's a new Biscuit song ad, blah, 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 blah. And they're giving us the dates and the, the ads and the spin counts and everything. And I went right to the, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not being a part of that. I will not be a part of putting Limb Biscuits behind blue eyes on our radio station. Fire me. Don't, but I'm not doing it. Have someone else do it. Because I'm not doing it. It ain't happening. Eric Manford Mann, better version of Springsteen and the Dylan songs. Yes. Once Manford Mann's Earth Band recorded Blinded by the Light. You see, this is where, Gwen, I wish you would have kept your question in a way. Because I just happened to do a look. Uh, when you asked me about the 70s and what was it about the 70s, if I'm not mistaken, 
um, you were like, what was it about the 70s that that draws you in so much? Dwarf Man, Nightwish, High Hopes, better than Pink Floyd? No. No, only because I've seen Pink Floyd do that live twice. No, it's it's not going to happen. Close? Yes. Uh, on the same in the same orbit? Yes. In the same conversation of, you know, great songs called High Hopes? Yes. Better than Pink Floyd's High Hopes? No. <laughs> Sorry. That's just not going to happen, man. So Gwen had asked me about the 70s and what was it about the 70s um, that that drew me in. So I, I just took a glance. You know, I mentioned this in one of my, uh, vid- I think a couple of videos that I've done recently about how we were spoiled. You know, and I, I mentioned this in a previous live stream as well about how we forget about it sometimes because of the, the glut, right? You know, just that, you know, once the 80s kicked in and the 90s, it just became this, everything got fragmented and we were just hit from so many directions and we, we kind of get lost in the shuffle sometimes. And she was asking, you know, like, you know, what about, and I'm like, the 70s, man, dude, when I go through the, the year, this is 1971. Look at the albums. Just 1971. This is one year. And look at these albums. Chicago 3. Uh, they'd already released 25 or 6 to 4. Uh, the previous year on their second album. So this was, they were coming off a massive record. Poco releases Deliverin', Uriah Heep, ZZ Top's first album, Uh, Kenny Rogers in the first edition. What was their track? Um, The first edition, don't, it's like a, um, Just, I just stopped in to see what condition my condition was in. Was that it? Did I get it? Stopped in to see what my can. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not playing anything. I'm not playing anything. I'm just. No, no, no. This is, this is Wikipedia. This, I'm allowed to put Wikipedia up. I'm not going to play any of these songs. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I learned my lesson. I got it. Um, yeah, I just checked, checked in, dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. So this is what we were inundated with. This, this is just January of American uh, of American album releases. Uh, Little Feet, Booker T and the MG's Melting Pot. Yo, man, this is an album you need to have. There's an, the, the title cut from this record is 8 minutes, 13 seconds, or something like that. Yo, man, yo, dude. Melting Pot by Booker T and the MG's is crazy tight crazy tight mountain uh nantucket sleigh ride gave us the mississippi queen i believe was on that on that record um jerry lee lewis dion fifth dimension harry nilson andy barclay james harvest carly simon dropping the debut and then i think she dropped uh tapest no that's carol king's tapestry dude this is just one month in 1971 look what we're hit with cactus miles davis ann murray crazy horse earth wind and fire James Taylor, Cool in the Gang, Faces, Argent, <laughs> Waylon Jennings. God, dude, the 70s were crazy. 70s were crazy. Uh, the Rascals, Jimi Hendrix with Cry of Love, Stone Age by the Stones. I'm not, I don't remember that one. Uh, number four on the UK charts. All right. Oh, it's a compilation. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I uh, love it to death. Alice Cooper. See, another thing, too, when I say these, uh, we're all going to feel like really old. Uh, Jethro Tull released Aqualung in 71. That's right. Yo, man, the piano intro of um, Locomotive Breath. It's just so metal. Just so metal, dude. Anytime someone bitches about the Metallica Jethro Tull debate, I'm like, don't. Don't, man. You're, 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 you're arguing with the wrong group of people here. You're... you're 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 really messing with the wrong group, bro. Uh, you really are. Aqualung and Locomotive Breath and many other tracks from them are straight metal. They're just 1971 metal. This is analog metal, kids. It's progressive metal. It's early days of progressive metal. It's metal. Oh, the Kinks with Percy Black Oak, Arkansas. Dave Mason. Mungo Jerry, um, that was the the album that gave us Summertime, right? 
the British Mungo Jerry uh, gave us the um, in the summertime when the weather is high, you can reach right up and touch the sky. Only England could hit the top of the charts with a jug band. Well, they're British. Boz Skaggs with Movements What was on that record. Um, third album. First on Columbia. Good, good, good. Delaney and Bonnie still putting out records. Janice and Swamp Dog. That. All right. Humble Pie with Rock On. That's just March. Now we're into April of 71. John Denver, Crosby, Stills, Nash drop a live albums. Dear record labels. What the hell, man? What the hell? What happened to you? What happened to you? What happened to live albums, double albums, live, you know, whatever. What happened? Caravan. Remember Caravan? Yes, you do. They're still going. They are still going. Jackson 5, Stevie Wonder, Grand Funk Railroad, The Doors Drop, L.A. Woman. Bro, The Temptations, Stones with Sticky Fingers, Doobie Brothers. Their debut album there, I think it's with... um. Take Me In Your Arms, Rock Me A Little While. Maybe, no, that was from another one. Thin Lizzy's debut. Mother Earth, Procol Harum, John Sebastian, Left Loving Spoonful. Welcome back. Dreams of a take it back. The Nice. That is uh, Keith Emerson's first band, if I'm not mistaken. The Nice, right? Yes. Keith Emerson, Gary Wright, Conway Twitty, Captain Beefheart, Blue Cheer. Amboy Dukes, the James Gang, War, Blood Rock. Look at that. Look at this stack right here. Blue Captain Beefheart, Blue Cheer, Amboy Dukes, James Gang, War, and Blood Rock. All released in the same month. Dude, these are all different, different music. Yet, we're all familiar with it. Because popular music was completely different. Then popular rock, popular... No, no, no. This was all just popular music. Now we're into May. I was two years old. Leon Russell, The Rascals, Weather Report. Weren't they some avant-garde British band? Weren't they? Oh, they're American Jazz Fusion Band. Okay, kind of like a Spyro Gyra. All right, Carpenters, Pink Floyd. Ram is released. Aretha Franklin's Live at the Fillmore. Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. Rory Gallagher's Debut. Graham Nash, Rod Stewart's Every Picture Tells a Story, Jimmy Webb, Bo Diddley, Frida Payne, Curtis Mayfield, dude, Lee Michaels, Ian Matthews, Hoyt Axton, Bill Withers, Johnny Winter, Johnny Cash, John Entwistle, Shirley Bassey, Roy Harper, Gordon Lightfoot, Tammy Wynette, Steve Winwood, and we owned all of them. (laughs) Oh my God, this is one month in one year of our youth. This is one month of one year of our influence that you're looking at here. Look, Budgie, the summer of 71, the summer of 71. This is when you were wanting to release the biggies, right? Budgie, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Tarkas, Joni Mitchell with Blue, Todd Rundgren with The Runt, Stephen Stills, Super Tramp, Harry Nilsson, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Hot Tuna, the Flying Burrito Brothers, Long John Baldry, the Grateful Dead, Link Ray, Mick Abrahams, Al Cooper, Rare Earth, Randy Newman, Chuck Berry, Leslie Duncan, Melvin Van Peoples with the soundtrack of Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song, and Jerry Lee Lewis. One month. One month. July, Herbie Mann, Allman Brothers, At the Fillmore, MC5. Booker T and, and Priscilla Coolidge, Funkadelic, Moody Blues, Joan Baez, Fanny. Remember Fanny? Remember the all-girl group Fanny? I think they were out of California, weren't they? Um, Can't remember where they were out of. But yeah, they were like an all-girl, they were one of the original all-girl bands. Dude, Deep Purple's Fireball. Summer of 71. Wow. Albert King, Isaac Hayes, the Guess Who, Sha Na Na, the Association. 
They're still coming off there. Everyone knows it's windy. The who, who's next? Bro. Bro, that's a massive record. Massive record. Followed up the, the Tommy album. Massive record. Um, Black Sabbath, Master of Reality, Summer of 71. Gilbert O'Sullivan. Alone again. Naturally. New Riders of the Purple Sage. Wasn't that um, Amy, Amy Grant's husband? His name's just leaving my head 10 years after. Atomic Rooster, Fleetwood Mac with Future Games, Moby Grape, Poco, John Lennon drops Imagine, Traffic, Welcome to the Canteen, Curved Air. Who are they? A prog rock. That's I, the name was familiar, but I didn't know who they were. Sitting in front of the radio with the mic, hoping that this blabbermouth doesn't destroy the song. Right? Um, saw Fanny on TV when they were good. So what's premiering now? I don't know. Uh, Vince Gill, thank you. Thank you. April Wine's debut album. Did that have, that didn't have Just Between You and Me. No, no, no. Fast Train. All right. Uh, Jefferson Airplane. Charlie Daniels. That was, that would have been Uneasy Rider. Would have been the album for that. Uh, Look at all the live albums. Look, one, two, three, four live albums released. Five Five live albums released in one month in 1971. Savoy Brown. Yes. The Bee Gees dropped Trafalgar. Isn't this the album with lonely days, lonely nights? Where would I be without my woman? Oh, how can you mend a broken heart? Oh, dude. Dude. That's a, wow. Wow. That, That might be, that may be one of the best love songs ever written how do you how can you mend a broken heart dude that is and I, dude it's it's like i just want to hug barry gibb <laughs> on a barry gibb talk show <laughs> yes uh dolly parton's coat of many colors no the uh lonely days was 60s that was 60s bgs that's right. This is all 71, Dwarf Man. This is all 71. The Hollies, Distant Light, The Move. Oh, my God. That's uh, ELO, right? The Move? Didn't they become ELO? Yes. Yes, they became ELO. That's right. Uh, let's see. Chicago, live, live. Look at all these live albums. Jay Giles Band. Bro, the Jay Giles Band. Jay Giles Band exploded in 1983, and here they are releasing albums in 71. Yes, The Babies, that's John Waite with The Babies. There, I think, I think that's mid-70s. Blood Rock, Bob Seger, Focus, B.J. Thomas, Renaissance. There's another prog rock band for you. Yeah, Northern Lights was their track. John Prine, John Mayall. REO Speedwagon with the debut record. Stoney and Meatloaf. Come on, dude. It's the only album by Stoney and Meatloaf and female vocalist Sean Murphy. Okay. Uh, on the Motown subsidiary. Okay. Of course, they met on the cast of Hair. Stoney and Meatloaf. Nice. Van Morrison with Tupelo Honey. There's another perfect love song. Good Lord. She's as sweet as Tupelo, honey. How did an English man, how did an English man write the perfect Mississippi love song? Fuck! UFO, Country Joe McDonald, Cold Spring Harbor by Billy Joel, Sly and the Family Stone, there's a riot going on, Gary Wright's footprint. Dude, we were spoiled. Metal, Pink Floyd. Elton John's Madman Across the Water, 71. Zeppelin's uh, Zeppelin's 4. Yes, Fragile. Genesis Nursery Crime. The Birds. Faces. Kinks. It's crazy. Rory Gallagher with Deuce. War with another one. Rory Gallagher and War have already released 
two or three albums at this point. We're only halfway through the year, and these guys have already released multiple records. Mott the Hoople, Grand Funk Railroad, Status Quo, Mountain Steppenwolf, Young Bloods. Look at that, man. That is just traffic, Nazareth. It's crazy. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Quicksilver, Messenger Service. Brewer and Shipley, Loggins and Messina, sitting in. Is that the one with the angry eyes? Danny Song, ooh. Even though we ain't got money, I'm so in love with you, honey. I have to sing it all crazy or I'll start to cry. So that's how, I think Danny Song gets a lot of us in the feels, doesn't it? Isn't Danny Song one of those tracks that when you hear, you're like, I didn't think I cared that much about this song, but I really do. <laughs> Let's just go to another random year in the 70s. 1976. Let's see what albums were destroying the world in 1976. So when the young kids say, Dad, why is Gen X so bitter? Just go to 1976 albums released, and it will tell you everything you need to know. Um, yeah. So let's go. Peter Frampton, look at that. That's how the year started. That's how 1976 started. Every white kid in every suburb had three albums issued to them. One each. Frampton Comes Alive, Fleetwood Mac Rumors, and Boston's first album. Everybody had them. So, when your kid says, Dad, why do you hate everybody? Let's go to 1976, shall we? Let's jump in the Wayback Machine, you little shits. So when any time the argument is today's music better, no. And here's why. Let me show you why. Albums released 1976. Peter Frampton. Frampton comes alive. Okay. You start the year with the biggest album of the year. Jethro Tull, Best of Jethro Tull. Lou Reed, Coney Island Baby. T-Rex, Futuristic Dragon. Bad Company, Run With The Pack. Journey, Look Into The Future. Grand Funk Railroad. Jimmy Buffett, 10CC. Loggins and Messina. Carol King, Golden Earring, To The Hilt. Bro. Leonard Skinner, Give Me Back My Bullets, James Gang, Smokey Robinson, Genesis, Trick of the Tail, great record. Um, Lamb Lies, no. Trick of the Tail, where's the one? Ah, Dance on a Volcano, that's the one. Um, sweet. Eagles Greatest Hits, Replacements, oh, The Residents, uh, Merle Haggard, Willie Nelson, Slade, Kiss, Destroyer. Say what you want about Kiss Destroyer or Kiss the Band. That record, dude, the record was solid. That was a solid rock record. It really was. Look at that. Detroit Rock City, King of the Nighttime World, God of Thunder, Flaming Youth, Shout It Out Loud, Beth, Rock and Roll Party. That is just a solid record, bro. I know that they... Um, I know that they kind of became caricatures of themselves, but but Destroyer, that is a solid record from front to back. The Runaways with their debut, Doobie Brothers taking it to the streets. You don't know me, but I'm your brother. Dude, that's like, that's a gospel song. That's a gospel song, man. Taking it to the streets is a religious tune in today's world. If you listen to that song, it'll break your heart. It'll break your fucking heart what the world has come to. And maybe that's another reason why we're bitter as well. Because we were told everything, and we just let it happen anyway. Judas Priest, Wings, Santana with Amigos, Thin Lizzy with Jailbreak. Guys, Rush 2112, Status Quo, um, Nazareth, Stephen Stills, Kingfish, Wishbone Ash, they had a good run. Boz Skaggs with Silk Degrees. That's got Lido Shuffle and um, Lowdown. Bro, that's another great jazz rock 
kind of a Steely Dan vibe uh, kind of a thing. I make a great supervillain. I'm sorry. Are we supposed to be going back and forth? I, I'm just having fun here. I'll jump off this if that's if it's too much. Dude, Bob Seger, Live Bullet. Isn't every track on Live Bullet a banger? Let's 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 look at Live Bullet. Let's put it. Let's look at an album put out by Bob Seger, and you, and then you'll you'll realize why Metallica were fans. Okay, look at this. Nutbush City Limits, Traveling Man, Beautiful Loser. I've been working. Turn the page. Bo Diddley, Rambling Gambling Man. That's a funky track. I don't I don't know why nobody has sampled that yet. I don't know why no rappers have sampled Rambling Gambling Man by Bob Seger. Catman Do, great track. Let it rock. It's just, Phenomenal record, man, from beginning to end. Jay Giles with their live band, Blow Your Face Out. It was just a different time, dude. We had a different level of musician. We just had a different level of musicians, man. There was a different... And when you look at these records, when you look at a lot of these bands, and this is something that I talked about in recent uh, videos, is the, the scope of influence of these artists. So when you're looking at artists of the 2000s and the 90s and even current ones, you're seeing these guys as their influence. And they're not as scoped as these guys were with their influence. So when you look at a Todd Rundgren album or an America album, there's so much in there. There's jazz, there's blues, there's soul, there's gospel, there's country, there's everything involved. Whereas as the industry started to streamline a little bit more, you started to get more focused, influenced of the artists. So certain artists in the 90s and 2000s only grew up listening to metal and these metal bands or rock and these rock bands and with a couple of whatever. These artists were influenced by big band. They were influenced by jazz. They were influenced by opera, all the other stuff. They were influenced by all of it. And they used it in their modern tones, creating these new things that later became the standards of rock, metal, whatever it may be. So this is a great example of why things are so much different because you're seeing, even with the tubes, this record, I guarantee you, has nine different influential levels in it. I bet this album, not even looking at it, but you guarantee this record runs the gamut of everything these guys listened to growing up, which was everything everything so that's what their music sounded like eventually it becomes post-punk or new wave or whatever you want to call it but at this time it was just music that's all if it rocked it rocked mm. speaking of rocks there's aerosmith's rocks um oh look at this acdc high voltage rainbow rising great record i think somebody in the chat that's your favorite record Blue Oyster Cult's Agents of Fortune, Uriah Heep, High and Mighty, UFO, No Heavy Petting. Come on, dude. 76 was a banging year. Steve Miller's Fly Like an Eagle? Dang, man. Dang. <laughs> Dang it, Bobby. Steely Dan's Royal Scam, Donovan, Jeff Beck, More Poco. Lou Rawls, you'll never find. Bow, 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 bow. Neil Diamond, Beautiful Noise. My mom got that record. Uh, yeah. Brand X, Alan Parson, Alice Cooper, Grateful Dead, Flying Burrito Brothers, Trooper. Raise a little hell, raise a little. Well, didn't they have Raise a Little Hell? Wasn't that their, um, wasn't that Trooper's big hit? Raise a little hell, raise a little hell, raise a little hell. Yeah, good times. Spirit. They had a hit in the 60s. No, early 70s with Got a Line on You. That's a great guitar tone in that song. Marshall Tucker Band, Long Hard Ride, great record. Um, Soft Machine, David Bowie's project. Um, Gordon Lightfoot, Bonnie M, Wild Cherry. We're getting a little disco-y here, but you get where I'm going with it. BTO, Ian Gillen Band, Pure Prairie League. Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Again, you, you go down this list, and we, we listened to all of this, didn't we? We listened to Jackson 5. We listened to Bachman Turner Overdrive. We listened to Pure Prairie League. We listened to Graham Parker, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Helen Reddy. Your mom listened to Helen Reddy. Your uncle listened to Merle Haggard. You know I mean? We had all of it. Dwight Twilly Band. 
I'm on fire. Right? Dwight Twilly Band, I'm on fire. Was that it? I'm on fire. Oh, hey, I got it right. See, man, sometimes the cocaine monkeys get it right. <laughs> sometimes, <coughs> sometimes the cocaine monkeys get it correct. Hawkwind, Boston's debut. Come on, man. Come on. Linda Ronstadt's hasten down the wind. Split ends. They had a hit in the 80s with um, I Got You. Because that's all I want. I won't forget. Because that's a whole lot. I don't know why sometimes I get frightened. What a great song. What a great pop song. Forgot about that one. Damn. Roxy Music. Orleans. Great harmonies. Uh, great. Was this the Dance With Me album? Look. Oh, my God. Look at that album cover. What the hell are you doing, man? What are you doing? Who, Whose idea was this? Whose idea was this, man? Whose I Like, like you had to convince four other guys. Hey, Calumetto, have a great rest of the day. You had to go into a room with four of your friends and go, all right, I got an idea for an album cover. Everybody get naked. No, 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 no. Trust me. Like, because, like, how crazy were the 70s? This album cover. This is an album cover. They had hits. People bought this. Your mom had that. This was played with a TV underneath. This is the album cover the Orleans went with. I want to see I want to see the ones they didn't go with. No, no. Scratch that. Scratch that. I don't. But is this the one with Oh, this is the one with Still the One. Still the One's a great track. It's got great um great harmonies in it, but that album cover. Phew, man, 70s were weird. 70s were definitely weird. Dirty Deeds was released in Australia. Rush dropped all the world to stage. Look, look at the live records, man. Live records, dude. We got to get back to the live albums. Montrose. Noise. Brian Ferry. The very early stages of um, emo, uh, goth. I, I don't, again, I don't like those. I, I don't like those um, titles because... They were so much more when you, you know, David Bowie would, you could put them in that category as well. These godfathers, you know, Roxy Music, Brian Ferry, Brian Eno, you know, you know Peter Murphy of Bauhaus, um, the guys from Sisters of Mercy. Um, I, I, I don't want to call it goth or emo or anything like that, even though some of their songs have gothic tones in them. I think it was, it, it was more just alternative. It, it was more of just, you know, minor key alternative rock is what it was you know it was anti-pop that makes any sense um tom waits still not liking tom waits more april wine there's a whole world going crazy does that have just between you and me no okay great song by them by the way um bu- 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 more hot tuna triumph with triumph elo Kansas left overture that's got the uh point of no return no that's from point of no return this has dust in the wind Right? Carry on, Wayward Son. No, Dust in the Wind is not on this one. That's on, that must be on the uh, Point of No Return album. Anyway, Al Stewart, Year of the Cat. You know, I've heard that song recently. Al Stewart's Year of the Cat. I gotta be honest with you, man. It it got, it, it was, it was presented to me in a h- horrible classic, you know, like this is this is not a good song. And I remember listening to it, and I hadn't heard it in years, and just absolute years, aside from like maybe snippets or hooks. But I actually sat down and listened to "Year of the Cat" by Al Stewart, and thought, "Fuck, this is a good song, dude! Like this is a really good song. Wow, 
wow, I overlooked that completely. That is a really good song. Yes. Uh, yeah, Led Zeppelin's song remains the same. Elton John, Blue Moves. Bob Seger's Night Moves. Bob Seger had that run, though, man. This is right. In, this is peak Bob Seger time. This I think after Night Moves comes um, Against the Wind was the next one. But he had like a three, four album run, including that live album, Live Bullet. That was just crazy good run. More Rory Gallagher. Sticks with Crystal Ball. Sweet Madam Blue. Is that the one on here? No. No, that's not on here. Um, and what's the other one I like from Sticks? Snow Blind. Can't live without you. No, no, no. No, no, no. Is that Rainbow? Snow Blind, Snow Blind, Snow Blind. Can't get away. Yeah, dude, Chris. Night Moves. I think we all know the line with points of our own sitting way up high, way up firm and high. The songwriting of these people is on a different level. The lyrics, the way they write them, the stories that they tell are, are just simple. They're, they're not like, you know, these aren't concept albums. These aren't, you know, fantasy, you know, trips of alternate dimension. No, no, no. These are just good stories. I was a little too tall, could have used a few pounds. It's like when the Kinks did um, Wish I Could Fly Like Superman. It, it's, it's these, yeah, dude. <laughs> these, are, these are basic, really well-written. Uh, thank you, Gwen. Sorry, I didn't mean to make this last a whole hour. These are just really well-written songs, man. Just well-written tracks, Night Moves. What a great record. What a great song. Um, Ted Nugent's Free For All. Politics aside, man. The thing I have with, with people is their gatekeeping. I am not a fan of Bob Dylan's politics. He's a little gross, you know, a, a beatnik. He's a village guy, right? That's not my thing. He, he's, he's of that world. But I, I can't deny that he writes good, mu- good songs. I, I'm, I'm not going to take away from his abilities. Same thing with Ted Nugent. He can shoot the cans all he wants and go on Bill O'Reilly and spout all his MAGA shit. I don't care. There are songs from his records that modern musicians can't touch. They're great songs. They're they're <clears throat> what was what's the word I'm looking for here? It's there was a different joy. There was a different um emotional disposition of the music. Yes, they were dark and they could have been written about tragedy and all this other stuff, but there was still a brightness to the music that just doesn't carry through today. Uh, Robin Trower. Woo, son, come on. Who doesn't have that one? Who doesn't have like three or four Robin Trower albums? I got mine right over there. Excuse me, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers with their debut. Scorpions with Virgin Killers. ZZ Top with Tejas. Yes. Arrested While Driving Blind. What a great song. $10 Man is another good track as well. Um, Doobie Brothers, Best of the Doobies. Leo Sayer. I know, man. That's one of those, you sing along to it because it's on. (laughs) More than I can say. Jackson Brown, The Pretender. Speaking of great songwriters, here come those tears again. The Pretender. Jackson Brown. Man. See, Brent, you're not going to, you're not, you're not keeping up with these guys, dude. You're not keeping up with them. The Eagles with Hotel California. Look at that record. Look at this son of a bitch. You're not, you're not. You're not keeping up with this, man. This is a different, this is a different world, kids. <laughs> this is a different world. This is a different world with different standards, different um, bars you need to reach, and... Queen Day at the Races, Wings Over America. I, I mean, dude, Blondie's debut, Uriah Heep's Firefly. Come on, man. Look at all these other albums that were released. Dude, this is just 1976, man. Ray Stevens, Ry Cooter, Pat Metheny. Dude, remember Pat Metheny? Of course you do. Of course you do. David Soul. He was massive. That was a massive hit for him. David Soul. Good Lord. Blackfoot. Yeah, man. 
So again, I just got to going on these little rants. I'm sorry. I'll get away from it. My bad. Jimi Hendrix did an awesome cover here. Train of coming. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't have to agree with anybody's. Um, same thing with actors, man. I'm not that guy. I'm I'm not that guy that's going to hold somebody's personal views and opinions against their musical creativity because I'm a conservative Southern Christian. I probably go against a lot of what the artists believe, okay, when it comes to these things. I don't care. I don't. They can think worship. I don't care, dude. Just make good music. That's your thing. My thing is my thing. I'll do my thing. Don't worry about what I think and believe and all that other stuff. You know, just worry about the stuff here. So I, I've never been that guy to, you know, well, these people are, are protesting, you know, Neil Young is taking his music off of um, Spotify to protest against Joe Rogan or whatever. It's like, okay, I'm still going to listen to, I'm still going to listen to Neil. I mean, I still own his music. Like Neil Young can't keep me from playing Neil Young's music. I, I have Neil Young's music. <laughs> If I want to hear Cinnamon Girl, I'm going to hear it. If I want to hear Cowgirl in the Sand, I'm going to play it. I don't need Spotify, and I don't need Neil Young's permission to listen to his music. Now, I understand the whole, um, you know, don't use it for your elections and things like that. I I get that. Um, All the 70s talking, Elvis wasn't even mentioned. I think, you know, Sip, there's a reason for that. Um, Elvis was at the end of his life and relevance. I'm just saying this objectively. Elvis, by 1976, 75, 76, Elvis was living on, was living off of an Elvis that no longer existed. So, but do I deny his impact on the world of rock and roll? Of course I never would. Uh, I would never do that. But by this period, at the height of the exploration, creativity, scope of influence what i'm talking about i think elvis was was a was a shell of himself and i think if most people were being honest they saw that i'm just speaking you know you could say the same for jim morrison you could say the same for jim morrison when people do the hypothetical if you could you know like we did with the question today bring one back blah 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 um it's like okay if you bring back jim morrison what do you think was going to happen what what do you think was going to happen with Jim Morrison? What do you think was going to happen with Janis Joplin? What did you think was going to happen with these folks? If they were going to come too, they would have come too. Jim Morrison was done. So that's that. Uh, I saw an interview with Raymond Zarek where he talked about sitting around for almost a year with occasional pop-ins and it's like yeah man that's i mean jim morrison was not long for this this earth so if you brought back anyone they would have just continued to do what they do they would have made some more music but there's no guarantee that that music would have been anything close to what they were doing before and and this goes to what i was saying with the folks just take it for what it is don't put too much into it you know, what artists failed before their time, what artists passed before that? No, none of them did. They all did exactly what they were, what they were here for. They served their purpose. They, they left of exactly what they were supposed to leave us. We are the ones that put too much into it. We are the ones that add more to the legacy, to create that connection and that legacy because we miss them as, as artists. So we, we overinflate value sometimes. Um, but, I always try to look at it and just say, dude, it's, it's, it is what it is. And they were here, they did their thing and that's what they were supposed to do. I tried not to think too much of it. I try not to put too much thought in it. Somebody said, look at 1980. So 1980 albums released in 1980. Well, this is going to be huge. This is going to be massive. This is going to be something I might need a minute for. All right, this is 1980 albums released starting in January. The Romantics, The Babies, Union Jacks, that had um, Back on My Feet Again, 
Union J- in your eyes. And yeah, that was a that was actually a good record. That was a good record. Uh, Romantics, Babies, The Buggles. That was Video Killed the Radio Star, man. Never, ever, ever has a song been more prophetic than Mr. Horn and that song right there. Wow, man. That is, and it's a great song too. It, but it's just so scary. It's so scary how that was so accurate. Jay Giles' band loves Stings. You love her, but she loves him. And he loves somebody else. You just can't win. And so it goes till the day you die. Yeah, man. <laughs> I love Jake Giles. They're such a great live band, too. UFO, Nazareth, um, Lou Rawls. More Lou Rawls. Got to get more of him. The Ramones, The Cure, Boys Don't Cry. I've got that one over here. Yeah, part of Elvis's decline was his manager. Absolutely. Um, absolutely, Barton. Um, I don't think... I don't think anyone really understands what they did to him. They really don't. Uh, Sugar Hill Gang, Brian Adams, Hart, Warren Zevon, The Knack, Elvis Costello, OMD, if you leave, don't leave now. Please don't break my heart somehow. (laughs) Against the wind. Okay, look at this record. Look at this record. One, I'm going to tell you how many of these songs we, we had in rotation on our classic rock station. Horizontal Bop, You'll Accompany Me, Her Strut, Against the Wind, Betty Lou's Getting Out Tonight, and Fire Lake. Six songs out of ten. Six out of ten from one album. Betty Lou's Getting Out Tonight. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, my God. Journey with Departure. Ooh, that was that was big. That was a big record. That was a big record. Squeeze, Argy Bargy, that's got Tempted. That's the, that's the album with Tempted, right? Paul Carrick's... Uh, no, Pulling Muscles from a Shell, that's right. Uh, tempted was from the next album. Another Nail in My Heart, great record. Why is he pulling muscles from a girl named Michelle? That's not what he's saying. <laughs> and it's not muscles. It's not what he's saying. Pulling muscles from Michelle. Don't, do don't, don't, don't. That's got a um, summer loving vibe to it. Then it, then it, then it. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah, squeeze. Paul Carrick. Uh, let's see. Iggy Pop. Survivor. They played my high school gym. They played my high school gym. That's right. 1986, they played my high school gym. We won a radio contest. REO Speedwagon played the year before. And then we got Survivor the next year. And then we got a band called, um, it was a family band. I can't remember the name of them, but they were horrible. Nobody showed up for it. Uh, We all left. Stiff Little Fingers. Remember them? Stiff Little Fingers. What did they, they had a good cover song of something I can't remember? Psychedelic Furs, bro. This is that I I always call this smart rock. Like psychedelic furs always remind me of like, okay, it's turtleneck rock. Does that make sense? <laughs> Does that make sense to say that the psychedelic furs are turtleneck rock? Does that really hope that that makes a lot of sense to you? It's turtleneck rock. Glass Houses by Billy Joel, another front to back banger. You may be right. Sometimes a fantasy. Don't ask me why. Still rock and roll. Dude, those are all just banger tracks, man. Def Leppard's All Through the Night. Bringing on a, was that bringing on a heartbreak? Um, no. No, it wasn't. Was this their first? This was their first album, though, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was the first. Yeah, the debut album. Okay. And it was the next album with Bringing on the Heartbreak. Um, remember when Grace Slick thought she was a solo artist? <laughs> That's Grace Slick thought she was a solo artist. Triumph, Van Halen, Women and Children first. Ian Hunter's Welcome to the Club, Genesis, Duke. Great record. Great record. Misunderstood. Turn it on again. I just posted this the other day into our link share. One of my favorite Genesis songs. I love that song. That song is such a great vibe. It really is. 
Um, such a great vibe. Scorpions with animal magnetism. Fuck yeah. Um, Daryl Hall, Switch. Judas Priest with British Steel. Yep. Iron Maiden's Iron Maiden. See, this is the Eddie I like. That's my preferred Eddie. This is the one I like. I don't like the other ones. I like that one. Uh, Black Sabbath's Heaven and Hell. God, dude. Look at this record. That is just, dude, front to back. Ronnie James, look at this. Look at, you talk about Murderer's Row. You talk about Murderer's Row. Look at this lineup. Ronnie James Dio, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, Bill Ward, and Jeff Nichols. <laughs> That's metal. That's metal. That's heavy metal. Uh, don't even talk to me about it. Pete Townsend, Empty Glass. That's um, Rough Boys. Yeah. Let Milo open the door. Keep on working, Empty Glass. And this track right here, And I Moved. One of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. I know Pete Townsend gets a lot of, catches a lot of flack. Here's the thing about this record you need to understand. This record, my British folks... Um, it only dinged once. It, I got a Facebook notification. This record, is Pete Townsend coming to terms with his proclivities. That's what this is. Because Pete Townsend always wrote concept records, whether he was writing for The Who, or whether he was writing his solo stuff, like face dances or something like that. But this record in particular, Empty Glasses and his other one, All the Best Cowboys Have Chinese Eyes. These are albums of Pete Townsend dealing with what he had been raised to believe was criminal. So criminal behavior is, is what we're talking about here and having to reconcile with that while being a rock star. So that's what this record is, a very powerful record that I think a lot of people um, don't really understand what, what Pete is saying in this record. But if you can, if you can understand how Pete Townsend writes, you'll, you'll, see, the, you'll see the message in there. Um, I saw you say David Bowie. I, haven't, uh, I, I did mention David Bowie when I was talking about like um, Roxy Music and, and stuff like that, David Bowie being the, um, the, the early days of what became goth, emo, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Motorhead's Golden Years, The Feelies. Uh, yeah, this is the album with um, Paint It Black, right? The Paint It Black cover? No? Yeah, yeah, it's got the Paint It Black cover on it. But that was 90 then when they did that. Lou Reed, Human League, Clapton with Just One Night. That's a great record. Magnum just did one of their videos. Just did one of their videos the other day. Um, Jerry Rafferty. Tommy Two-Tone. Nice. Tangerine Dream. Still going strong. Saxons with Wheels of Steel. Remember that record? Wheels of Steel by Saxon. Great logo, by the way. You can't have that logo today, but that's a great logo. That's a metal logo right there. Um, look at that. Motorcycle Man. That's in my uh, Motorcycle Man is in my Deep Cuts library. I made sure to play some some Saxon. Grace Jones, she did the um, Demolition Man, the police track, Demolition Man in the 80s. That was funny. Devo, Roxy Music, nice. The Beat. So everybody knows here in the United States, these this is called they're called the English Beat. By the way, uh, they had it. They had a hit with a Save It for Later, I believe. And there was already a band in the States called The Beat. So when The Beat um, dropped, they had to go with The English Beat. Same thing with The Charlatans. When The Charlatans dropped the album Some Friendly and it released in the United States, there was already a band in the States called The Charlatans. So The Charlatans released the album Some Friendly as The Charlatans UK. So if you bought the album in the United States, your album says The Charlatans UK. But if you buy the album in England, it'll just say The Charlatans. So, and the same thing with the beat. Human League, Don't You Want Me is a great track. 
That is a great song. Peter Gabriel's third album. Um, that's got Shock the Monkey in it on it. Um, no, Games Without Frontiers. <sighs> Whistling tunes we hide in the dunes by the seaside. Kissing baboons in the jungle. It's a knockout. <laughs> it's a great songwriting. Such weird songwriting. But it was awesome, wasn't it? Was it? What does he say in the beginning? Lottie plays with Jane. Jane plays with her. Lottie is happy again. Just, again, the songwriting was on a completely different level. Just a completely different level, man. Joan Jett, The Vapors. Turning Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. The Cramps. Nice. Billy Squire. Ah, uh, another ruined, foisted by his own petard. Without a doubt, foisted by his own petard was Billy Squire. Except, cheap trick, Kim, Karn, Kim Karn's The Kinks. Uh, Bob Marley dropped one. Frampton with Rise Up. Was, no, that's not the I'm in you. That, that's the one where he finally just quit. <laughs> where he was like, fuck it, I'm done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Huey Lewis in the News debut. Samson. Remember them? Samson. Crocus, Screaming in the Night. <laughs> Mm. Crocus, Sammy Hagar, the Chipmunks with Chipmunk Punk. What punk music did the Chipmunks do? Oh, look at this. They did a car song. They did uh, they did the Cars, the Knack, Tom Petty, Frustrated, Blondie, Billy Joel, the Queen. My Sharona. Okay. Maybe our music wasn't as good as I'm thinking it is. <laughs> maybe maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't. You got the chipmunks doing punk. And you know, here's what's here's what's offensive. None of those are punk songs. If look, I want to see the the slits, the waitresses, right? I want to see, that's, the cars aren't punk. Tom Petty's not punk. Frustrated, good girls don't. My Sharona. Post-punk, maybe. Kind of pre-grunge kind of vibe. But Billy Joel, you may be right. No, that is not a punk album, dude. That's not even punk in the 70s. You're not doing the Clash. You're not doing the Sex Pistols, the Specials. None of it. That's not punk. That is Ultravox, Vienna. Um, Ultravox, what was their hit? Um, Oh, what was it? Is it on this album? X-Ray Specs? No, that was a band, X-Ray Specs. It was Vienna. Wasn't that their hit, Vienna? Yeah, I think that was the title cut. Donnie Iris, Ah, Leah was the track joy division echo in the bunny men see now you're starting to see that alternative vibe this is where you're starting to see the alternative vibe uh starting to, to get the mainstream so this is that you know by 1980 you're starting to see that with joy division echo in the bunny men um zap no they were a dance band sorry um, Susie and the banshees released kaleidoscope pat benatar crimes of passion holy shit what a great record what a great record. Paul Simon with One Trick Pony. Um, yes, with Drama. That was a good record. I don't care what anyone says. Fight me over it. B-52s with Wild Planet. UB-40. Um, Lover Boys debut. Michael Schenker. Nice. 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 <laughs> Cliff Richard. Is that the one with Stumbling In? Dead Kennedys. Gary Newman. I told you, man. The, the song Cars. It's amazing what happens when they drop in a tambourine. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, Blizzard of Oz, was 1980. See, dude, you're not keeping up with that. You're not getting anywhere close to this to this year in, in, in anything modern at all. Here's David Bowie, Scary Monsters and Super Creeps. My wife has the CD right over there. Yes. Great record. Look at all of them. Ashes to Ashes, Teenage Wildlife, Kingdom Come. That's a great record. John Cougars, Nothing Matters and What If It Did. Is that the, um, I got your hand? 
in my back pocket and Sam Cooke's playing on the radio. You say it's all right. Mm, hold tight. Ain't even done with the night. There it is. That's a doo-wop song. That's again, this is 1980 and a homeboy released Ain't Even Done With The Night. And look, Peppermint Twist. <sighs> Spoiled we were. Ain't Even Done With The Night is a great track. It's, it's, it's such a Midwestern vibe. You know, it's a Bob Seger vibe. It's a going to the drive-in, tasty freeze, you know, after a baseball game. You know, after a Little League game kind of vibe. You know, back of the truck, riding down the road kind of a vibe. Just such such an awesome vibe. Madness with Absolutely. Curtis Blow, here comes your hip-hop. Here's Now you're starting to see it with Curtis Blow, and I saw Sugar Hill up there as well. Herbie Hancock. Um, Circle Jerks, The Police with Zenyatta Mandata. Solid record right there. Cameo Prince. Talking Heads Remain in the Light. Um, Joe Jackson. Stepping out, one of my favorites. One of my favorites. In excess, yellow. Oh, yeah. Dire Straits with Making Movies. That's got Skate Away on it. Oh, I love that track. And Tunnel of Love, Romeo and Juliet. Again, another record. That whole side. Look at that whole side, that one side. Those are three great songs right there. 1980. Wasn't that long ago. U2 with Boy. That had I Will Follow. That was their hit. That was their hit from there. Um, was I Will Follow, I believe, right? Um, yep, I Will Follow. That was a college radio hit as well. Um, Steelheart, Hawkwind, more Rory Gallagher, The Clash. Killing Joke, nice. We had uh, a Killing Joke. They released Millennium. Was it Millennium? No, it was Pandemonium was the album in 93, I believe. And the track that we played was Millennium. That's right. Killing Joke. The Babies with Over the Edge, Rock Pile. Rock Pile was, um, that was um, Dave Edmonds and Nick Lowe. That's right. Okay. Rock Pile. Holy shit. I just, uh, <laughs> I just, I just hit a couple of UK folks right there with that one. Um, Slade. Bauhaus, bro, that was a big record. The Damned, the Black Album. This is this is a very important record. It really is. Uh, it's a very important record. Um, when the Damned dropped this in '80, it did. It changed the hardcore scene. It did. It it legitimized the sound. So Adam and the Ants, King of the Wild Frontier. What do we got in here? Ant Music, Dog Eat Dog, King of the Wild Frontier. Great record. Still, what are you, though, dude? What are you? Are you a native Indian? Are you a highwayman? What are you? Are you a chav? What's going on? What are you, Stuart Goddard? Yeah, that's his name, Stuart Goddard. What are you? Turn of a Friendly Card by Alan Parsons. That's got the, um, don't answer. No, Games People Play. That's right. I thought it was Don't Answer Me. That's Moody Blues. No. My, my brain's, my, my head's going too fast. I'm over my skis right now. Um, Steely Dan with Gaucho, Ario Speedwagon, High Infidelity, woof, woof, banger, Tough Guys, that's the song, Tough Guys is the song that has the Little Rascals, the He-Man Woman Haters Club in the beginning, um, yeah, that's, that's the one, Tough Guys, Rock Pile, yes, Rodri, thank you. Um, the, oh yes, I will follow that, that opening that is, that is legitimately the textbook definition of hook. Perfect hook. You hear it similarly in don't change by in excess. Um, there's another great, there's another great hook in a song called plowed by sponge. Um, these are just great hooks that have just stayed through time, but yeah, I will follow. I was on the outside when you say, you say you needed me. That was, um, again, I give you two all the credit in the world for evolving over time. You know, when you look at boy and then you go to unforgettable fire, or you go to war, or you go to, you know, Joshua tree and all these other albums and they evolve whether you liked it or not, you know, they did evolve with the time. So I will give, and I give all of that credit to the edge. 
I, I give all that, um, all that credit to the musicians of that band. Um, yeah. This is from Ammonia Avenue album. Thank you, Dwarf Man. Um, yeah, that, that's, I give that to Edge. I think Edge was more involved with keeping up with um, the, the, the sounds of the time than Bono was. I think Bono was busy getting his picture taken next to starving children. So well, that's how that goes. Wow, time flies when you're talking a lot, doesn't it? So would you do me a favor? Uh, so would you like to smash it the third then? Oh, I, I didn't follow that one. Make sure you hit that uh, like button. Get that ratio up. What's my ratio looking like right now? We, we looking good? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Look at you, man. Thank you for all those likes. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Make sure you head over to the Discord server. If you haven't by now, become a uh, uh, subscriber to the Discord server. We have a lot of fun chats, sometimes late at night. For us, anyway, it's late at night. For a lot of you, it's early morning. But uh, we have chats, we post links and, you know, uh, band news and all that other stuff. Puss in Boots video from Adam and the Ants was pretty trippy. So the video is Stand and Deliver. The one that gets me is Stand and Deliver because it's all set in, you know, the 18th century England. And then at the end of the video, there's four black guys dressed as World War II soldiers, and it's like, did you just bring them in because you thought you needed some black guys in your video? Is that what you're doing here, right? Like, like you don't have to. It was just, it's just weird. It's it's anachronistic in a in a weird way because they're right there. They're not, they're not like hiding in the background. Like somebody went to the props department and ran out of you know, ran out of costumes or anything. No, no, no. They're they're very prominent in the video towards the end. Go ahead and watch it. Go watch um, Stand and Deliver by Adam and the Ants. It's really weird. Um, it, it's very confusing. Um, so it's like, no, like, like I, I kept up with the video the whole time. <laughs> or like, I understand the whole time. Like, the plot. I get what's going on. He's a, he's a dandy highwayman. I get it. What are the four black guys doing here from World War II? And why are none of them... See, now, if the four black guys came through a portal and were all freaked out that they arrived in 17th, 18th century England, I would believe that. Or if the people in the video freaked out that four black guys suddenly showed up to 18th century England, that would make sense. I would still have some questions, but it would make a little more sense than just four random black guys in your video. It's really weird. But Englishmen make weird videos. Like that Utah Saints video for something good uh, where they're in the bar doing the running man. Uh, just a... It's like he was floating on air. <laughs> it was the freshest moves I've ever seen. <laughs> just random people. There's random people in your video. So again, thank you very much. Uh, which ones were time travelers? Thank you. Again, I... I very confusing. If I could get a, maybe I should do a standalone video for Stand and Deliver to ask these questions of the general audience. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should jump in the Wayback Machine and be like, what the hell, man? What the hell is going on? <laughs> what is happening here in, seven, in 18th century England? Where'd the black guys come from? So again, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to hang out with us here on the east side of Music City, USA. Thank you. To all of our moderators, Tria, Little Raven, Chris, everybody keeping you knuckleheads in line. Thank you, Marcus, M Park, Sip, Eric, Kitty of the Wilds. I did your video recently as well. Barton, uh, Yanni was here, Dwarf Man, Paul, everybody. I don't want to miss anybody. Bad Mother Rucker. I want to get up here and say hello to everyone in case I miss them. No, I think I got everybody so far. So thank you again for taking time out of your day to hang out with us on the east side of Nashville. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure that you are following on any and all the social media. And of course, get over to the Discord server. Have some fun over at the Discord server. If you're feeling generous, we have everything to help the sh channel grow from Patreon to PayPal to Super Chat. Whatever you can do. I didn't want to get into the times today because I'm seeing a lot of videos coming out of Canada and I don't want to fire up Tria. 
So if you can afford to contribute, that is awesome. Your generosity will always be appreciated here on the east side of Nashville. So thank you very much for hanging out with us. Thank you to Connect 200 Music to see an Aunt Betty's Nut Butter. Thank you to all of you for joining us today. Make sure you're looking out for each other. Make sure you're looking out for your neighbor. Try to do at least one good thing a day. I am Eric Clark. You, you are the best darn subscribers in the world. 